Hey everyone, in today's video, I would like to talk to you about some remote access methods that you can use in order to access your NAS. So this will just be an, an introduction video where I explain all the different methods uh, with, you know, an architecture view. I'm doing this because I have seen a lot of, you know, recommendations on the internet on how to configure your Synology device you know on how to configure it to access it but i think that sometimes they do not really say what what could be you know the security risks of doing so depending on the method used so this video is just to give you some insights on you know what you could do what are some of the pros and cons on the you know security wise and you know i've made some kind of a uh, you know of a list with their with the security level let's say of course this list can be you know challenged why i have uh, gave you know uh, th those numbers uh, so if you have anything you know you can just write in the comments and i will see what i can do uh, for you so in terms of remote access we've got some easiness the higher the number the easier it is to configure the security level the higher number the higher the security is and the risk the higher the number the higher the risk is with this method so we've got the quick connect relay which is very easy to configure which has a low security level because you know all your data transit through a, a third party a Synology relay server so the risk is you know high for your data for the quick connect it's still easy to configure the security level is a bit higher because your data it doesn't go you know through the relay server but the risk is still you know the same there is um well a difference because the quick connect is direct connection between your devices using some kind of a tunnel for the direct connection so it's the destination network address translation or port forwarding on some router so it's quite easy to configure if you know how it works the security level is a bit higher than the quick connect service because you know you have a better control of what is going on but the risk you know is very high because if someone knows your ip address then it can connect to your nas and maybe try to compromise it or to com compromise the services that are running the difference with quick connect is that they need to you know to know your quick connect id um instead of your ip address so that's why the direct connection is a bit riskier the synology reverse proxy has the same number that the dina because the synology reverse proxy it does not really bring a lot of security uh, you know more in this case then we've got the synology vpn package so it's not that easy to configure this for myself it's not something that i really like the security level is a bit higher because you only need to expose to expose one service and the risk is lower than the reverse proxy because at least you need to be authenticated before being able to have access to the uh, you know to the web interface of your nas so it's a bit better but still you're exposing a synology service now you can have also the third party reverse proxy and web application firewall so it's not easy to configure the security level is way higher than the other methods and the risk is you know low you are still exposing your nas to the internet but in this case you have you know some way to block some sql injection for example some command injection or some xss attacks for example this is the subject of my next video by the way also you can have some intrusion prevention system and network antivirus with this you know uh, reverse proxy package depending on which product you use so that's why the risk is quite low now the third party on premise vpn so it's quite also easy to configure i guess you know it's not that hard the security level is way higher and the risk is quite low because you know you need to be authenticated to your um, on your vpn first then you would need 
to be authenticated to your NAS. And if someone compromised your VPN, well, then they would still need to compromise the uh, NAS. And then you've got the third party bastion. The, it's quite easy to configure. The security level is very high and the risk is very low. But the third party bastion is more for um, administrative, um, you know, administrative stuff. And for uh, four eyes uh, with Synology support, for example, of always someone else that we will see right after. So I still have to make some videos on those three topics later. So with the Quick Connect Relay, so this image, it comes from the Synology Quick Connect white paper PDF. So the pro is that you've got, you know, no DNAT or port forwarding to make, and it's very easy to configure. The count is that your authentication data and data, they are relayed through their servers. And as you have usually a certificate with their Quick Connect Relay server, it means that they can, you know, decrypt, I guess that you, they can decrypt what you are sending. The performance is also poor. It's not compatible with all applications. There, the country restriction is, in my opinion, not possible because what you are going to see on your NAS is the IP address of the Quick Connect Relay server. You, get, you will have a low visibility because once again, you only have the IP address of the Quick Connect Relay server. You've got some possible problems with, com, you know, with regulations, with compliance, because if your data needs to say to stay in a country, well, then it will transit to their servers, which may be in an other country. And this, you might be, you know, in violation with some uh, compliance. And the security is only based on Synology and your NAS is also exposed. So those are a bad points. The NAS is exposed, it is exposed not through its public IP address, but through the Quick Connect service. But as everything, you know, is centralized like a phone book, it might be easy, depending on your, your Quick Connect ID, to be able to find it and connect from a web application perspective. So this is something you know to keep in mind. I would not like to be in a phone book because then it will be easier to find my service. Now for the standard Quick Connect, well, you've got still no DNAT. It's easy to configure. The authentication data uh, authentication data and data, they are not related in this case. You've got some better performance. You still can make some country restriction with the Synology firewall. And you've still got a, a little bit, you know, a better visibility than the other Quick Connect Relay service because you can see which client IP address is connecting to your system. For the cons, well, it's not compatible with all applications. You still have a low visibility. And once again, the security is only on Synology and the NAS is exposed. For the DNAT and Synology reverse proxy, they're a little bit different, but from a security perspective, it does not really change much. So the pros that, you know, if you know what you're doing, a port forwarding is easy to configure, the same as for Synology reverse proxy. I've got some videos on the topic, by the way, if you need, you know, to, to see how it's done. You can make some country restrictions, you have a better visibility, and it's compatible with all applications. The cons is that once again, you're exposing your NAS, and the security is only on Synology. Exposing your NAS here is a big problem because if someone knows your IP address, he can take all its time to try to, um, to hack your NAS. Well, it would be the same with the Quick Connect service, but the, um, I think that the Quick Connect service only you know, forwards requests for web application file, uh, for web applications. But if you are using, for example, card DAV or web DAV, well, there is not a lot of security with those features, except, you know, having a strong password. So it's still a bit different. So you can, you are really exposing your NAS in this case, which is not that good. For the Synology VPN, so you will use here the VPN package of Synology. The pros is that you can still use country restriction. You have a better visibility because you need to be authenticated. So you know who is, you know, who is authenticated to the VPN before accessing your NAS. And there is only one service to expose, which is the VPN server package. The count is that the security relies on the VPN package. So I just hope that those packages are, you know, patched often just to avoid, you know, some vulnerabilities of staying open too long. 
but once again you're exposing your NICE directly to the internet. Only one service, but it's still direct exposure. For the third-party reverse proxy and web application firewall. So here the pros is that, you know, you can have the country restriction. You only have one service to expose. You have way better security because of the WAF, IPS, antivirus. You have a better visibility because you can see who is connecting and who is making what request. And you have also better control because you can, you know, block some people, can block some IPs, you can uh, block some requests, I think. And the security is handled by a special security software. The cons is that it's harder to configure and maintain. And in a way, the NAS is still exposed, but you know, it's way better than have a direct connection to the NAS. Now the third party on-premise VPN, it can be your home router, for example, who does this. So it can be your security software before the NAS, which is, you know, doing, uh, which has this feature. So the pro is that your NAS is not exposed at all. You have some kind you know, of, of double security where if someone wants to compromise your NAS, they first have to compromise your VPN gateway. And you can have 2FA for the VPN gateway and 2FA for the NAS. Uh, so this is, you know, a better solution. But of course, you cannot allow anonymous access, for example, to some documents if you need it, or you cannot, you know, share stuff with people unless they have a VPN configuration. So this can be a lot of work if you need to share. So this is not something that you can use um, all the time. And then you have this third party bastion. So this is more for administrative access. So the NAS is not exposed at all. You've got some double security once again, because you would need to compromise the UTM and then compromise the NAS. You have two FAs for the two FA for both system, and you can have some four eyes, which means that if you need someone to help you on something, you can actually see what he's doing, you know, like some kind of a team viewer, for example. And for the cons, well, usually this is just for admin access. And for the Sophos device, for example, it allows to have the protocols like HTTP or HTTPS, RDP, SSH, and Telnet, which means that I could expose my SSH service. I can access it from the internet, but first I would need to access the UTM to have a 2FA authentication. And then it's everything, you know, HTML based. So it's not a direct um, SSH or HTTP connection. So this is quite good. So in conclusion, the security should never rely only on Synology features because Synology is not a security box. Just imagine an, uh, a microwave which has a, you know, an oven feature it will ne the oven feature will never be as good as a real professional oven. And this is the lesson to learn, you know, because even security boxes, security softwares or hardware, they even have their own flaws, but they need to patch them fast because those are security companies and they need to assure the security of those devices for their clients. So that's why, well, it's better to have a dedicated software for that. So a third-party hardware software should be used. And in my case, I'm using, uh, if you're wondering, I'm using all those technologies. I'm using the reverse proxy with the web application firewall, the IPS, the antivirus, blah, blah, blah. I'm also using the third-party VPN package on the Sophos UTM, which means that if I need some administrative access, the only way is to go through um, the Sophos UTM VPN. And I'm also using the Bastion to access some of my devices inside my network if I need to access it, you know, from um, another country, for example. So you can do a lot of things. And uh, I think that's it. So if you got any questions, just feel free to ask in the comment. I will try to answer you. If you need more details, I'll try to give them to you. And if something is video worthy, because there is a lot to talk about, just ask me and I will see what I can do. See you next time. Bye bye.